What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sit Down Saturday. Today, we're going to be talking about the past, present, and future of Transformers statues. They've been around for a very long time. We're not going to cover all of them, but we're going to hit the high notes of the past, the high notes of the present, and then we're going to talk about the future. First and foremost, though, is everybody good? Everybody okay? If you are not okay, and I mean physically, mentally, emotionally, if you are not okay, don't wait till it's too late to let somebody know, talk to somebody about it. The trying times are all unique for all of us. Let's act like Eddie Murphy and Bowfinger and keep it together, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Hold on one minute. All right. Want to know what's more embarrassing? It's not from today. I got to clean up my act around here. Little bit of house cleaning to take care of. Last week's Fans Toys discussion regarding the triple changers. I saw a lot of people talking about the shipping ex expenses in the comments. I just want to reiterate that in that video, I say that that allots for a very small percentage price point wise to the total. Five to $10 is what I was estimating per piece. The price I think mainly comes down to the other factors I discussed. The other bit was in that screenshot, it does say that they are retail 130 in China. I I don't believe that to be true. I think that something is lost in translation there regarding what the retail and what the wholesale is. A lot of the Chinese dealers, even on eBay, are not selling stuff at that far below margin. So I would imagine that even though it says retail, that that is not accurate. So that seemed to be another thing I had to clear up. And rightfully so. I should have cleared that up. That's a little confusing, I admit. I also wanted to talk about the Darth Maul video from last week. I missed one piece that I really wanted to mention, and that's the movie realization samurai style. Darth Maul, super cool piece. And I definitely should have had that in there. And then the x -trans bots dead end toy version. A lot of people were like, you know, not for them and not, I get it. I wouldn't do it for any other set of characters. They just happen to be my favorite, so I'm gonna do it. And a lot of people were curious if I'm getting the G2 versions. I am not. That just, I thought about it. I really did give it some consideration, but it just, those decos hold no meaning for me. So we'll let that go. One last thing before we get started and relatively important. My buddy Andy, he helps me with all the Force Friday stuff. He also helped pull a lot of the information for this video. He's been a tremendous help to me. He has a podcast called Your Mother's Favorite Podcast. The link to all of that stuff is in the description, social media, etc. Check out the podcast. It's for mature audiences. At least give the dude a follow on Instagram or something. Let him know that Scully sent you. He has been a tremendous asset and help to me and my channel and has asked for nothing in return, including this, which I just wanted to do for him. All right, so let's get into this conversation. Recently, I have turned a corner regarding my collection. I am opening up the doors to a new possibility, which is quarter scale statues. I'm excited about it. I have a few Star Wars ones, but nothing has felt quite like what this Soundwave one felt like to me. And as I'm getting ready to venture down this road, one step at a time, mind you, one very expensive step at a time, I got to thinking about my history regarding statues. And I've always collected statues, at least since the early 2000s, and actually collected them before I got back into action figures. My wife's a big fan of the statues too, so it kind of helps everything. Grease the palms, you dig? But I got to thinking about these old Transformer statues, these hard hero ones, and how I kind of always wanted that Ravage one. And then I just recently reviewed the Imaginarium Soundwave one, so I was like, you know what? It's probably worth having a conversation regarding statues, but how do we approach it? And I think the appropriate way to do it is past, present, and future. So with that, let's get started and go back in time. So when I think of Transformer statues, I immediately think of the Hard Heroes line. These are the statues that you would always see at a con on the top shelf of some vendor's display area in a box that was beat three ways to Sunday, but with character designs that you were always like, Ugh, that's kind of cool. This company operated mainly between 2002 through 2005. They produced a variety of Transformer mini busts and were known for being exceptionally tune accurate. This was way before the tune wave had set in. I, th I think these pieces actually hold up pretty well over time for what they are and in many ways still could create a pretty interesting display. To this day, every time I see the Ravage, for instance, I'm always super tempted. I just think it would be a cool looking piece. And don't get me wrong, while mostly what they did were busts. They did do a number of full figure statues, including an Optimus Prime, a Megatron, a Rhinox, a Bumblebee, and a BotCon exclusive Unicron. But I think that this company should kind of always be held in fairly high regard as being one of the innovators and originators of Transformer statues and did a pretty decent job of it. Now, our next company is Palisades. And they eventually went out of business as well, but they operated mainly between 2003 through 2006. They produced a variety of Transformer pieces in 12 inch and 14 inch scales. Their stuff was G1 styled, but with a strong dream wave-ish influence. Some of them do look decent, 
but some of them look super wonky. And it mainly comes down to their proportions. Their Optimus Prime, Soundwave, and Seekers in particular look pretty strange. But they did have some pretty cool ones. Their Shockwave looked pretty cool. The Wheeljack wasn't terrible and kind of looks like those non-transforming Wheeljack figures that came out later on from, was it Bondi? I can't remember. And they did a Ravage as well, but I would probably prefer to stick to the Hard Heroes one. The only release that they talked about but never produced was their Red Alert, which we can all assume is also going to provide a side swipe in some capacity, but that was canceled before ever getting the chance to release. Now, there is one more design of theirs that we got to talk about before we get out of here and regarding this company, and that is is their RC. They did a green repaint of this as well, but this face is horrifying. It kind of looks like that face that's popping up on memes now that says something like, you're working on a computer, like you figure out your password, IT tech. That guy kind of looks like that. Horrifying. The stuff that nightmares are made of. I refuse to let my children see it. It's not good, but I do like their shockwave. I like their Grimlock. They did do a number of things that I think do look pretty cool. And then the last company that we need to discuss, I was shocked at how good I thought they were. But that is our old friends, Diamond Select with their foot firmly on the throat of the comic book industry, but that's a discussion for another time. But they released a variety of Transformers statues from 2005 through 2010. They made a couple of full statues, but produced a ton of Toon-inspired minibus similar to their Star Wars ones. The minibus stand around six to seven inches tall and retailed for about $50 a pop. They did produce several diorama-style statues, like their Unicron piece, as well as a wall-mounted Optimus Prime and Megatron. While they're nice for what they are and a big improvement over the Palisades, they're they're very much of their time and don't really hold a candle to the modern stuff. However, they have some really cool designs. I'm actually thinking about picking a few up. They're kind of exactly what I like about Transformers, like definitely G1 inspired, but with a little bit of a modern sensibility on them. And I love how they incorporated the display base into the kind of world and universe of the characters. They did a number of different exclusives, different versions, like tune versions of their Prime and Megatron, but had a lot of cool ideas. In particular, their Megatron that's being reformatted and using the Unicron as the display base for it. Just smart stuff. They definitely produced the Iconic 6 and knocked them out first and foremost, but a lot of their other ones really hold my attention. Their RC, and they even went as obscure as Alita 1. They did sets of tapes. Like, they really covered a wide swath of this franchise. But I think my favorite one that they did is the Starscream Coronation version. Just an extremely clever and smart piece. I knew a few of these existed, but I had no idea how expansive the line was. It really does reach an awful lot of characters to include even War Within versions of some of their characters. Like, just brilliant ideas. Obviously, sculpt-wise and more than likely knowing Diamond material-wise don't really hold a candle to much of what you can get, but doesn't hide the fact that they are cool. I've come to really appreciate variety in displays, and I'm thinking about seriously picking up a few of these. And with that, let's begin to move into the present times, which is a very interesting time to look at the statue game because they're very nicely done and they're very expensive. And there are multiple different approaches being done by multiple different companies and no two are kind of the same. So with that, let's get started. Now within the modern era, there are four main companies we got to talk about. We're gonna start at Pop Culture Shock also known as PCS. They focus on small runs with statues in a variety of scales. Their Transformer pieces come in at about 150 to 250 in their classic series and stand around 10 to 11 inches tall. Their museum scale pieces, which stand around 26 inches, cost around 750 to 850. All of their pieces go exclusively for the G1 tune aesthetic with simple designs, virtually no line work, and beautiful cell animation shading paint work. They aren't for everyone, but for what they are, they are beautiful. They look just like the cartoon, but in many ways, in my opinion, it kind of illustrates my issues with having things look just like the cartoon. They just don't look interesting enough for me to spend that type of money on them. However, they're definitely going to make an impact and have a presence on your shelf, no doubt. It's just an awful lot of money for a very simple design. But if you like G1 Tune, it doesn't get much more G1 Tune than this. 
And they also have a shockwave coming, apparently, which looks like it's following suit wholeheartedly with their approach and design. Next, we're going to dig into XM Studios. I like what they're doing here. They're a Singapore-based producer of high-end statues with extremely low production runs and limited product releases. To date, they have released Optimus Prime, which is the one I'm tempted by from this company. I don't think I'm ultimately going to go in on it, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted. They've done a Megatron, which doesn't do it for me, really. It's definitely G1-inspired but there's something about that helmet that really screams the movie verse to me. They've done a Grimlock, which does look amazing and does get my attention mainly because it feels very Fall of Cybertron, War for Cybertron to me, and I love playing him in the games. That Grimlock also comes with a smaller dinosaur version for display purposes. They've done a Starscream and they've done a Bumblebee that comes with Spike in an exosuit. Most of their pieces cost around the $2,000 mark and feature reinterpretations of Generation 1 designs with a much more stylized dynamic take. A lot of this stuff is perhaps a little too far gone for my taste, especially at this price point. When you start talking about spending thousands of dollars for pieces, you really want those pieces to be exactly what you want. And the only ones of these that get close for my sensibilities are the Prime and the Grimlock, but neither one of them I think are going to persuade me enough to actually go in on them. The next company we're going to talk about is Prime One. And once again, much like Diamond Select, I was amazed at just how many pieces they have produced. Their main focus is the Bayverse stuff, but great Guga Muga, if the Bayverse stuff is your bag, you have a lot to choose from here. They're a Tokyo-based producer of museum-quality statues. Their Transformer pieces typically cost about $2,000, but can go as high as $3,000. They have had massive success with their Bayverse statues and busts, which regardless of your thoughts on the designs of the movies, are absolutely beautiful and perfect, plus pieces of art. But most surprising to me, they've also created realistic interpretations of Primal and Megatron from Beast Wars, and I think they look amazing. Beast Wars is not my bag, doesn't do a thing for me. Couldn't be further from my interests. But I say that to say this. If I was a Beast Wars fan, I probably would have both of these. The Megatron in particular just looks absolutely fantastic. All of the little nods and details Dinobot head on the ground. The rocks and canyons are on the primal with Waspinator, I think. I think that's Waspinator. I could be wrong about that. And the rocks and leaves and moss and all that, like just gorgeous. They've even done kind of modern what if these characters were in the movie verse, but looked more G1 type representations of Prime and Megatron, which are interesting enough. But once again, they're just a little too far left to center for me to really get behind them. If I were to pick one, I would pick the Prime over the Megatron, but neither of them really do a whole lot for me. They also have some design from the Bumblebee movie, including the Blitzwing, which looks just like it. Of course, Bumblebee himself and... Prime, which looks amazing. If I was in love with this version of Prime, this would be what I got. And they have a Soundwave and Ravage coming as well, which looks just pretty much up to par. Exactly what you would expect from this company in regard to these designs at this scale. Both Prime 1 and XM are known in the statue game for doing pretty much perfect business. So I would be very surprised if this was any different. And it looks par for the course. This stuff looks perfect. Fortunately, it's not for me. Unfortunately, what is for me is the last company we're going to talk about, which is Imaginarium Art. Now, as you know, I just recently got the sound wave and it has turned me inside out. This is exactly the aesthetic that I'm looking for with G1. It has nods to the toys. It has nods to the tune. It has a modern aesthetic. It has beautiful paint. It has detailed sculpt work. This is my bag. This is what I love. And their designs largely are beautiful. Now, I don't feel that stuff at this scale is a collect them all sort of game unless you just got money pouring out the seams. But that being said, the Grimlock piece in particular is something that is definitely a goal of mine to try to achieve. That's something I want to get my hands on. And in many ways, I feel like my collection won't be complete without it. It might be the finish line for me. Not to say that I'll stop collecting at that point, but just like uh, there's nothing going to beat this for me. Like it's my favorite Autobot character and it just looks amazing. Honestly, I could do without the Sharktacons and Wheelie, but I think it looks better for it to be fair. The only other design of theirs that I can't lie does capture my interest is this RC. 
I just think it looks sleek. I think it looks stylized. I think it looks G1, but it looks modern. I love the pose. I love the base, which is another thing I feel like they get right. Like their poses and bases are just out of this world in regard to G1 stuff. Their Devastator is another example of that, like just running through the wreckage of the world it's destroying with all of the rust and wear and tear and dirt and paint application applied. Just beautiful. Their wheel jack is another one that just pose just strikes it for me. It's like just so dynamic. Their jazz as well. Some of their stuff gets a little too far outside the ballpark for me. I'm not crazy about their Seekers. Once again, I love their bases and stuff. I'm just not crazy about their design. But the one that's kind of the goofiest to me is their Ironhide. It just looks wonky. I do love the Starscream Coronation, though. Like, that's a beautiful piece. But yeah, so, so that's pretty much the statues in the game today and a coverage of the statues of yesterday. There's one other piece I want to talk about briefly, and that is this Baroness Ravage statue. I just want to talk about it because before I got into figures, well, I guess I should say after, after I got out of figures, but before I got back into figures, I was doing pretty much exclusively statues and I was super excited about this piece. My wife actually pre-ordered it for me for Christmas one year and then unfortunately it got canceled because it didn't get the retail support that it needed to get made and instead we got this thing, which I guess is equal. But not really. I have that too, by the way, but it's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted, and I'm bummed that it never happened. So what does the future hold? You know, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting. I think as generations grow older, we'll start seeing, like we're already seeing some Beast Wars stuff kind of filter in. I think the Baver stuff gets a pass because it still has G1 aesthetics to it in a, in a broader sense. You know what I mean? So who knows? I would imagine we'll get some of the younger representations of these characters, like maybe Transformers Prime or Armada or something like that. But they, they got to be careful because they got to put a spin on some of that stuff in order to make it look sort of mature enough where somebody wants to drop a couple thousand dollars on it. I know that the future for me is going to be limited. I want my collection to have a variety of pieces, statues, figures, quarter scale, six scale, 12 scale, 118 scale. I want a variety of stuff. I know that that sound wave has had an effect on me in a way that nothing has in a long time. That Grimlock is now a big goal of mine and I have some other ones in mind as well. But wherever it goes, I'm going to be watching it closely and who knows, maybe in a couple years we can sort of revisit this conversation and see what, what's been going on. And with that, stay safe. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.